Could you possibly get the flattest black super matte ultra pigmented acrylic non-toxic black paint from a really cool artist that's in the UK this was going around for a while and it's supposed to be crazy flat black matte so I ordered it it's kind of expensive I would say this is about 8 ounces worth of black paint, maybe 10 ounces. But of course, in light of Ghost Girl Diaries, and in honor, of course, of Ghost Girl Diaries, I think not too long ago I claimed the black unicorn as my mascot for Ghost Girl Diaries. So I actually picked up this, um, it's, like a, it's like supposed to be a horse head or like a unicorn head. And it was white um, originally with the gold um, unicorn crown, horn, whatever. And I got it from Hobby Lobby. And I took this flat black matte uh, paint that I finally got from UK. It took like almost eight weeks to get here. And I painted two of these for my house, which I think it looks amazing. So of course, in lieu of Ghost Girl Diaries, I actually have the legitimate mascot of GGD finally in the flesh or in the death I guess. Hey you guys what's up welcome back to my channel and I know that you definitely see that there has been some changes behind me it's actually been a super active three weeks I haven't really filmed for like three weeks so I'm gonna catch you guys up on all of that stuff but while I was gone, and I'll go over that later, I actually got on Hulu and I watched this video, or it's actually, I guess it's a documentary called American Ghost Hunter. So basically it's supposed to be a documentary. My assumption was it was kind of going to be a documentary backstory on what it's like to be an American ghost hunter, right? I mean, via the title. So Ryan Buell is in it, Lorraine Warren is in it as well, and I think the executive producer is a guy named Chad Kalick, if you pronounce it that way, I might be wrong. So Chad was basically the director and writer for this documentary, and he has made a couple appearances on Paranormal State. This American Ghost Hunter did come out in 2010, and I do remember them making rounds to like large cities. I believe Ryan was with him to do kind of interviews and to do screenings for this actual documentary. In fact, I remember at the time I was living in Colorado and I remember they actually did do a screening in Denver. I wanted to get down there for it, but I didn't make it in time. So when I saw it was on Hulu, I was like, cool, great, let's watch this, let's see what it's about. I've been wanting to catch up on it for a while. I wanted to like it really bad and it was not what I, I was expecting. It was not at all what I was expecting. So of course you guys know the producer in me is going to critique this on a film level and it hurt me to watch it. I'm just going to say attempting to get to the end of this was painful for me. Now I know most of you out there aren't going to notice the things I was catching or picking up on which is things like lighting, improper lighting. There was not really a storyline. When you're doing episodic television or a documentary for that matter, you need to have some sort of a beginning, middle, and end. So take Ghost Adventures for example. When they first started, um, they would go in and do the history. They would do the lockdown where someone would lock them in there. The middle part was the actual investigation. And the end of it was uh, them being let out of the investigation and, and can't believe what we found and all that stuff. Now they've kind of switched the ending to 
I'm so glad we were able to help them or, or help them learn what was here and what kind of activity was going on. American Ghost Hunter had absolutely no theme behind a beginning, middle, and end and that was so frustrating for me because I wanted to like it and I wanted it to be a fluid storyline, which a documentary should be, and it was just really hard to get through. They obviously did have a professional camera crew or I think a professional crew, which I will give Chad and everybody on set props for that, but there were times they would switch from proper professional, like, filming camera footage to cell phone footage and even 2010 I know it wasn't too long ago but still you can see it's not an iPhone 7 plus that has this amazing camera inside of it to be doing video footage so I was really disappointed that they should have rented more cameras or purchased more cameras in the budget rather than using extra cell phones and, and such for actual footage that they were using in this documentary. It's interesting because before I watched this, I happened to just look it up because I was like, ah, American Ghost Hunter, I can't remember what it is. So I Googled it on my iPhone before we started it, and I realized that it had really low reviews on like Amazon and Rotten Tomatoes and um, IMBD Pro. So I thought, well, I'll give it a shot because sometimes critics don't have the same opinion as you do. The main reason that I also wanted to review this for you guys is because this is actually an excellent tool to help you guys as investigators learn there is a distinct difference between an actual possession and someone that is suffering from some sort of untreated mental illness. Now do take in mind that as an investigator, you are not, you do not, as an investigator, you do not have the education or credentials unless you have a PhD and you're a doctor to give them some sort of a diagnosis because you're not a doctor. So the one thing I could definitely tell you guys is never ever meet with someone or even talk with someone on the phone that's experiencing some sort of a haunting and then attempt to diagnose an untreated mental illness because that's not fair, you can't do that. But I will say what I saw in this documentary I feel was more of a person suffering from some sort of untreated mental illness or depression versus someone that was actually under an, an actual possession, which is what Chad was wanting to basically allege. So Lorraine Warren was brought into this. Uh, she was basically asked to come and interview Chad's mother. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched this and you're not wanting to know what happened, don't finish watching my review. So basically Chad is alleging that his mother is under some sort of a possession, not an oppression, um, you know, not some sort of, not even some sort of influence. Like he goes straight to full possession. There is, a cho there is a chance that she could have been under some sort of influence from energy in the house, but for Chad to jump to conclusions of a straight up possession, I think was really wrong and he shouldn't have um, alleged that because I feel like that could give paranormal investigators the idea that it's okay to jump to that extreme conclusion automatically and that's not appropriate. Basically what happens is Chad says that his mother has had this problem inside of this house for many years. There is a point where she gets on the floor and they start sprinkling her with holy water and she starts kind of laughing hysterically. They end up going back again later with Lorraine Warren and she's very defensive and she's like, no, nothing's wrong with me. And I just, it's not the classic um, what you're looking for, for an actual possession. And even Lorraine Warren says, you know, I don't think that she's going to be qualifying for something with the Archdiocese, which is the Catholicism Church, to actually conduct some sort of, you know, exorcism, a legitimate exorcism. So that's kind of when Lorraine Warren does make her exit from the actual documentary. Ryan Buell is in this, but he is definitely the previous Ryan Buell, obviously before he, he was on the current state that he's on or track that he's on. And so Ryan was in this, and I hate to say it, but it feels like what Chad is trying to do is kind of make his own character and um, put forth himself as a lead investigator. And unfortunately, having Ryan on there, who's already done Paranormal State for so long, Ryan obviously immediately goes into character as the host, and Ryan basically steals the show from Chad and it ends up being Chad's movie, so that's quite unfortunate. He probably shouldn't have put his competition in the actual documentary with him, 
because it did not suit well and Ryan did end up stealing the show yet again from Chad. It was difficult to get through because the storyline was not fluid and I had a really hard time believing the sequence that they had going with this alleged possession and I was really disappointed. I was disappointed because I feel like a lot of people might watch this and you know there could be believers out there that think they're seeing this. There was a lot of problems with the audio as well where the background noise would be over, it would be so loud over the voiceover that you could almost, it would, it would like faint out the voiceover, you couldn't hear it properly. So I'm not sure who was doing their audio but it was not good and it, with the fluctuations in the audio, whoever did their post-production, it was really rough. And so there were times where we obviously had the television or the sound system on one level and all of a sudden it would blare and blast out of nowhere. So there were a lot of production issues from what I could see, which is crazy considering this was like a documentary that they released for screenings all over major cities around the country, right? My opinion on it is Chad's mom actually possessed. No, I don't think she is. I think she could definitely be under the influence of something in the house if that's actually true. But I do think she has some sort of untreated mental illness. I'm not sure what. But going into you know that conversation, I do want to tell you guys, you need to really be careful when you're dealing with people that call you up out of nowhere and say, hey, I think my house is haunted, can you come investigate? Now when you're dealing with like historical societies or museums or actual locations like bars or restaurants that are alleging you know, a haunting, that's different. What I'm talking about is when a person calls you up and says, my house is haunted, can you help me? You need to be a bit skeptical of it. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of things that I have gone through personally. So one example I had was one gentleman called me. Um, he had called, we had had an actual hotline in Colorado. This is obviously pre-paranormal challenge times. And this gentleman called me on the hotline and said that he thought aliens were actually manifesting out of his children's toys. So the things he was saying was so out there. And I actually came out and asked him, I said, you know, are you under the influence of anything like drugs or alcohol when this is occurring? Sometimes you have to be honest because you don't want to waste your time going out to a location with gas and paying for food for your team, and you also don't want to put your team in a dangerous situation. That's really more important than anything, right? So I had asked this gentleman if he'd been under the influence of anything, and he said sometimes. And so I had told him that at that point I couldn't help him, and that if there was sobriety in place and things were still happening, that he could call me back. So this gentleman started calling our hotline at all hours of the night, leaving voice messages that he was seeing things manifest out of his children's toys. He was not calling it as a ghost. He was saying that it was some sort of alien creature. Obviously, I don't know if that really could happen. I don't deal with aliens, so he was calling the wrong hotline anyways. <laughs> but I was very skeptical of going to a place like that with my team. I did not want to put anyone in danger, so I did not return his phone calls, and eventually they did stop. The next thing that I had happen was a woman had called me. She had basically moved from one side of the state of Colorado to the other, and she'd moved into this house that was very old and she was having a lot of horrible things go on. She actually thought that her fiance may be under some sort of oppression or possession. So basically what I do in those instances is I will give people homework that call me when they're looking for you know, some sort of help for their haunted location. Once again, this has to do with private residences only. Basically, I told her that you know even if we came in to do a cleansing or a clearing, she was going to have to be the one that tells it to go because she is renting or owning that property and she has to put her foot down in order for it to leave. She absolutely would not do it. She did not feel comfortable with it. She was either agnostic or atheist, so I gave her some St. Michael homework to do to see what would happen. Um, would the energy increase if she used, you know, things in the name of St. Michael or prayer in the name of St. Michael? Or would it decrease and go away if she put her foot down? And she basically refused to do it. Then I got several other phone calls with her kind of crying in the middle of the night that 
she thought that her fiance was under a serious possession and there were some dangerous things happening. He was throwing things, there was glass being broken and I did not want to take my investigators into a location that was dangerous like that. I did turn down the investigation. She claims that they moved out of that home and everything stopped, all of the activity. Uh, once they left the home, I can't confirm or deny obviously anything that happened in that case. But when you're dealing with a private residence, there's a couple of things you have to keep in mind. One, if the owner or renter isn't willing to put forth the effort to try to get rid of the energies themselves, that's a really big red flag because even if you have someone come in to cleanse it, they need to be the ones that say, no, you cannot stay here, I am not allowing you to stay here. But with that in turn, also keep in mind, when you have a claim of someone saying that there's a possession going on, that can be quite scary. I'm not saying I'm a non-believer, but I am saying that it's a very rare occasion that that's likely to be happening. And if there's some violent occurrences happening like glass being thrown or violent outbursts, you have really got to consider if it's worth your time and possibly the lives of your investigators to go in there. I do understand that we're in this industry hopefully to help people that are having problems, but there is also another thing that you have to keep in mind, which there are some crazy people out there, unfortunately. So you have to decide upon interviews and interviews with this person and this private residence and you also need to make it clear, even if I come in there to investigate, are you aware that this could potentially stir up energy and this could potentially make things worse? What you're doing as an investigator is not only going there to collect evidence, but you hopefully will be giving them a copy of their evidence to potentially take to a church or the archdiocese or wherever to have someone come in and clear, cleanse, or possibly exercise the house or the person. So it's more than just gathering evidence, and that's the big deal that you need to look at the big picture. It's not just about, ooh, we caught some really good stuff to post on YouTube. It's dealing with people's lives here, guys, and so that's where you have to really make sure it's not just on the people that you're going to investigate, dealing with their lives and possibly uprooting them as a family, if you're finding some potentially dark, bad stuff, but also putting your investigators' lives at risk. So just look at the big picture before you go in to do a private residence. This movie, American Ghost Hunter, is perfect example for that. I don't know what is wrong with Chad's mother, but I do think there is something going on that is not paranormal related, which is very unfortunate. I'm not sure if he purposely you know, planned this documentary in paranormal relation around her mental illness. We would hope not, obviously, but it was really rough. It was hard to get through. It was filmed poorly. There was post-production issues. And unfortunately, there was no storyline and I could not help but be annoyed through most of it. So if you guys are wanting to watch it, go for it. Otherwise, take my word for it. So the question is, where have I been, right? I've been gone for like three weeks and I'm so sorry. Things just kind of started happening one thing after another, really good things that were happening. And one of those things, as you can see, is we have changed things up here in the background. So obviously my computer is no longer here, my Mac is gone, and that's because sometimes when I edit, you know, the background would change with the rolling earth, which I love, but we just needed to kind of up it and get a little bit more professional, if you know what I'm saying. Another thing of why I actually switched from a why I switched from my office to an official studio. I was having a really hard time being able to split up time management between being at my office for work, being at my office for school, and then being at my office for Ghost Girl Diaries. So I just needed, I needed another space so that I wouldn't get burnt out as easily. I can't wait to show you this side as well. So basically this room has been divided in half as a studio. This side is all Ghost Girl Diaries and that side will be for makeup tutorials and girly stuff for my other channel and I can't wait to share that with you guys. Some other really good news that happened in the last couple weeks that I was gone is that I have actually some clothing brands that have been watching me that I didn't know. So some alternative clothing brands that I actually wear that you guys see and as well as some makeup companies that have actually come forward saying, hey, we realize that you use our makeup, you've tagged us in 
Instagram and we want to sponsor you. So I actually have some companies that are going to be giving me some of my favorite clothes and some of my favorite shoes and makeup so that I can share that with you guys on my other channel. So that's a really big deal to me just because I love fashion and makeup so much. Another really big thing that just happened was I graduated with my associate's degree from college, so I'm really proud of myself for that. I had a wonderful graduation and um, it was just really chaotic those last couple weeks finishing up finals and then getting ready to actually graduate. I did also apply to several film schools. I had my eye on some in LA and I finally was accepted to a film school and what I'm even more proud to announce is that I've actually been offered a full scholarship for the next two years to get my bachelor's degree in film and I'm so thrilled that they actually love what I do. So part of the reason that some of my time was taken up the last few weeks was in order to apply for this scholarship, I actually had to present them Ghost Girl Diaries, like the entire staff, um, I had to present them what Ghost Girl Diaries was. So I actually showed some of my footage from Paranormal Challenge as well as what I do with you guys for production and just talking about Paranormal, which is my love for it. And the entire staff of this film school thought it was amazing. And the other cool thing that is really exciting to tie into it is, you know, they were like, well, you know, technology is involved along with engineering and science. Where do you see this going? And so I was explaining to them, well, you know, we love the science side as paranormal investigators, but you could potentially get a thesis and do a scientific method in paranormal. So the actual film department spoke with the engineering department and the science department, and they are willing to have some scientists or science majors, along with some engineering majors, actually merge with me to hopefully do something creative with Ghost Girl Diary. So that's really cool. That's something that's kind of far down the road or down the path from now, but it's something really fun and cool to look forward to. And I am so grateful to everything and everyone that I have ran into on this path of Ghost Girl Diaries. So now that I have the studio set up and now that I have all of this stuff kind of out of the way that I am able to function a little bit better for you guys and set up a more professional kind of YouTube channel for you, I am back and I will stay back. And I'm so excited. Uh, that we got to do this big move. It was a really big process, obviously, and we're still not finished. In fact, on the other side of the camera, which you guys can't see, we still have a whole half of room to be working on. I do have several people that work for me that are production staff, like production assistants, and so thank you to all you guys that have helped with this move and make this possible. I really appreciate everything that you've done. I hope everybody is doing wonderful. I can't wait to catch up with you guys on social media. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time. Hell yeah. <laughs>